well, but my name's Elizabeth Arnold Weiss, Professor Weiss. Most of you know me um, already. If not, it's it's wonderful to meet you. And I'm the host of this Dream Industry Mentorship Speaker Series. Um, and I'm just so glad that you could make it tonight. So we are so honored to host a phenomenal guest speaker. Um, this is a person who's become a great friend of mine just over the last few months, and I know you'll just derive so much value from, from learning from him and connecting with him, but Kailash Tulsi Gahara, distinguished alumnus of USC Viterbi and founder at Altusia, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing that right, mm -hmm. and Megasource, um, about his remarkable journey as a founder, CEO, entrepreneur, and leader in the global technology space. So Mr. Gohara received a master's in computer science from the Victoria School of Engineering in 2010. And during his time at USC, not, not exaggerating, he served as president of the Indian Student Association, hosted within that realm, hosted the former president of India, and he also received a leadership award from the USC Office of International Services. He is a natural leader. He's got that leadership mindset. He's got that entrepreneurial mindset and that ethos. And and he represents the, truly the best of kind of who we are and who we want to be. Um, I see him as a highly aspirational and inspiring figure. Thank you. A super relentless optimist and a very dynamic entrepreneur who delivers value to everything he does and so clearly impacts everybody that he comes into contact with and works with. So we just really honor this this um, awesome, awesome speaker. So as founder of Altusia, um, which provides software development services, and I love this tagline of winning the change. I think we get to hear a little bit more about that. I want to better understand what that means and what you intend you know, with that tagline. And also really a company that's become kind of I've become quite enchanted with and that is Megastores, an online social and video commerce platform for artisans. And it seems to be from what I from what I can tell, empowering artisans and craftsmen throughout India to preserve their traditional techniques and sell their wares across the globe. And the tagline for that company is everything handmade. Um, he also puts out, he shares value with everybody he meets. He's a wonderful mentor. Um, he has a newsletter called Making Dreams Real. He'll talk a little bit more about that. And through this newsletter and other kind of video clips and things that he offers, he shares his wisdom, his character, his, and the entrepreneurial challenges and experiences that he has, and also real keys to leadership and value of, of mentorship. So thank you so much much, Mr. Gahara, for Thank sharing you. with us tonight. We are so happy that you are here. So let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Gahara. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Professor. <laughs> Great. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody, uh, for joining this uh, session, uh, Dream Industry Mentorship uh, Series. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor uh, Elizabeth for inviting me to this amazing initiative. Uh, to share my experiences <clears throat> in the field of, uh, let's say, computer science, education, uh, startups, entrepreneurship, business, leadership, and so on. Uh, and at the same time, I'd like to thank uh, Viterbi School of Engineering, uh, USC, uh, for you know, uh, setting up all such great programs for USC students, uh, as well as uh, other professionals who are connected uh, with USC. So thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I'll start uh, with my intro. So uh, as Professor Weiss uh, talked about, uh, so my name is Kailash. Uh, I am uh, from Mumbai. And uh, basically, uh, just wanted to quickly share about a journey. Uh, overall, this session was all about how your aspirations, you know, your uh, dreams, when you act on it, how you can make them real. and. Uh, what is the process, and if it has worked out uh, for someone, then it might as well work out with uh, you know many people. So I was uh, born uh, in Mandvi, Kutch, Gujarat. It's a very small town, uh, beautiful uh, uh, town in um, uh, Gujarat. Uh, I completed my uh, education there, 
in 2008 i completed my bachelor's in computer science from mumbai and in 2010 masters uh, computer science at usc viterbi school of engineering uh, then i worked at vmware for 3 years uh, as a software developer and uh, after that i returned to india uh, and uh, when i returned to india in next year i started my own uh, software development firm uh, atulsia technologies uh, so we are into both product as well as uh, services we'll talk about that and in uh, 2020 i have also started uh, one startup that is very close to me in terms of you know bringing that small change uh, out for good for society uh, in general with the use of technology so that's mega stores uh, in general i would like to also share that apart from my both of these businesses i also spend good amount of time in community building you know organizing various events uh, you know uh, talking about uh, education career guidance you know entrepreneurship lessons and i'm also as a business coach i also talk to and guide various startups uh, in india i'm part of various uh, uh, panels at uh, different uh, uh accelerator programs uh, um in india so that's a quick introduction uh the subjects i like to talk about are these you know that varies from entrepreneurship to business education career work or study abroad it software anything in general with technology uh with mega stores the handicraft and e-commerce thing as well and in general positive mindset motivational uh you know things about life thing of things about you know different uh, challenges you face and how you can overcome so all of these topics uh, so i've delivered more than 100 uh, public speaking events and uh, i really uh, you know would like to towards the end also you know talk to you guys about your experiences uh why what was that one thing that you that re- you know you really liked about and you know you wanted to join this session so i would like to rather hear your story as well and uh, you know so that everybody can uh, you know get something out of it so quickly about the usc experience because sir we are talking about usc experience so few of the things that i would like to share um so uh, out of everybody you know on zoom for example if they have joined uh, how many are still studying at usc uh, if you can just uh, give a thumbs up on the screen or put in the into the chat box that me me or something like that you are still studying one guy okay kritika all right anybody okay a few more in private chat okay uh, so basically uh, internship and campus job so usc has great uh, uh, you know uh, offers uh, for students and professionals uh, to get the internships or campus jobs there are various student associations that uh, one can be part of and you know be part of various activities there uh, i was part of association of indian students as a volunteer and then next year as a president uh, also uh, and uh, we had uh, hosted uh, you know uh, dr apj abdul kalam he was uh, uh, you know president of india and we had hosted him as a lead india 2020 moment uh we had also hosted various actors like amir khan pipli live devin bojani you know we had helped out uh, because they were connected with usc cinema school and so on and so forth uh there are a lot of events happening around the campus by various organizations uh, uh, uh you know and the students can you know take part in all of these activities i was also part of usc robotics club where uh, we also got chance to visit spacex which is uh, Uh, near to usc and you know we were also building submarines and you know a lot of new tech back then uh, in the field of robotics um, campus movie fest i don't know if it is still around uh, or not but uh, during that time you know they provided some equipments to students to make a movie and then you know they also uh, you know gave uh, declared winners basically uh, to you know uh, shoot a short film and uh, uh i was of the opinion that you know why not let's try it out and just you know by trying uh, we made a simple uh, you know i would say very basic movie two cups of coffee and uh, in the west <laughs> in the west uh, us region that movie got selected as a sweepstakes winner and uh, basically uh during that time if you imagine in 2008 time frame uh i got an award of worth 15000 us dollars <laughs> from the campus movie fest just imagine this was just uh, by luck 
I would say and just I say, you know, why not? You know, try because there are, you know, a lot of opportunities. I also got a chance to visit uh, the Sundance Film Festival, also interview uh, producer like Davis Guggenheim and many other personalities over there. Um, we also were part of TEDx at USC. That was the first TED conference uh, organized and I think uh, uh, Stephen Hawking he was the first speaker. He was here at, at the Boward Auditorium. Uh, I was also part of the Global Impact Program, many research studies at USC. So finally, you know, both academics and career-wise, USC has provided a great experience, uh, you know, for students. And it is just by how one can uh, get the best uh, advantage of it. And uh, also, I would received leadership award by, you know, Office of International Services, OIS, um, and so on and so forth. So. USC and beyond, uh, basically. So there are, uh, after your USC graduation, you can be part of the uh, USC U U Alumni Association where you know, there are a lot of WhatsApp groups, email groups. You, know, you can uh, network on uh, uh, Viterbi link. Uh, that is a portal uh, which is out there. There is also a fight online portal where you can connect with other alums as well. My motivation towards uh, you know, why I you know, I have done multiple sessions uh, at USC, uh, online as well as offline, you know, guiding students why USC. Um, my main motivation is about USC has got so many different opportunities, uh, basically, for students and professionals. Why I keep saying professionals? Because many students, they do take uh, some professional courses here as well. Uh, and it is only a matter of fact that how one can maximize their time uh, at USC because let's say if you're just coming at a master's student, you're coming it for two years probably, you know, and apart from your academics, how many other activities one you can really do? Uh, so it's about that. So I try to provide all this uh, information to students and uh, probably, you know, uh, they get inspired and say, hey, no, why not? You know, we can do this or we can do that and, you know, try to see it. So that's the overall, uh, I would say, USC community. Um, you know, connecting with professors, you know, students, other professionals, uh, mentors, you know, so USC has got everything. Uh, so even after USC, uh, you know, one can get connected. Uh, so just, you know, some advices for students, uh, those who will be watching uh, this recording afterwards as well, is that uh, how you can uh, maximize, you know, the your opportunities here, you know, your life at USC. And what are the few tips that I can share? Uh, the ones that you can see uh, on screen probably, you know. So do you guys see the presentation uh, in on Zoom or no? You see it, okay. So uh, managing your time is the most important thing everywhere, you know, at USC or otherwise or, you know, anywhere uh, is the most important thing wherein you must uh, kind of at the end of the day analyze just for a few minutes, you know, what did I do today? Uh, how much time I spent on this or, you know, how much time I spent on reels, how much time I spent on reading emails or, you know, uh, uh, physical activities or, you know, stuff like that. When you start analyzing this, you'd find out that um, what was your major uh, task? What did you do? Whether it was urgent, important and so on and so forth. So managing your time is the most important. Now, next thing is the calendar based to-do list. So uh, I've, I've uh, you know, I was part of multiple, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, motivational uh, seminars and you know a lot of techniques for business owners you know to manage their task so mostly you know people go by simple to-do list like you know simple list that I need to do this 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 but you know it keeps uh, increasing uh, the size of the to-do list keeps increasing and then you get the tension that you know okay you know what what will happen you know I'm I'm not able to complete everything and you know there is that opinion that you set it out that maybe you know I haven't been able to complete all you know that kind of uh, guilt or you know something like that the best tool for this one is the calendar so whatever that you need to do if you put it on to the calendar that reminds you this is what you need to do and that's the best technique ever so you don't need to maintain any to-do list and just whatever that you have to do it just allocate a time slot even if you have to read a book or you have to go for an appointment or things like that that is what you have to do i mean that's the simple technique and you know these things that i have put it here of course these were for the students perspective but for anybody uh, for that matter you know can utilize this technique and it is being used by many of the industry leaders also they don't have used to do list all they have 
on their calendar, that's all they do it. Apart from that, they will not do anything basically. So that's how they prioritize uh, things. Networking and leadership, uh, of course, you know, USC has got, you know, a lot of opportunities, you know, a lot of events happening around the year and, you know, so that's the number one thing I do recommend uh, for people to be part of uh, various events, activities uh, like this, right? Uh, to make this event kind of successful, you know, whatever that we are part of, you know, some people would have put in time for uh, the flyer design, somebody would have uh, uh, done the marketing, you know, the registration or the technical stuff. When you volunteer for, you know, doing such things, going forward, you will also have to organize some events, you know, maybe your kids' birthday parties or your office uh, tours or things like that. You will have these smaller, smaller experiences that eventually build up and become like a, you will become like a pro. So, you know, all of these things. So, there are a lot of networking opportunity throughout the year. Uh, so, definitely take a chance, uh, you know, to be part of these uh, events. Be a yes man, uh, I would say. Now, uh, there are always, uh, you know, two things, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll first talk about the yes man thing. While you are studying, so what happens is, you know, you have got your fixed academic uh, schedule because you know that, you know, I have classes on so and so days and this is what I'm going to do. Uh, what about the rest time? So maybe, you know, time for assignments allocated and time for, let's say, campus jobs is allocated. Now, how about other pockets, you know, which are empty, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so when there are opportunities coming, when something new comes, let's say you are a computer science grad or a, uh, electronics, uh, you know, uh, major students, for example, and something like, let's say, uh, dance class or something like, you know, acting or something like, uh, you know, travel or some, some opportunity comes, uh, I would say, you know, say a yes and try it out. Unless and until you try, you don't know what happens and when you go out of the, you know, your comfort zone, there are new things, you know, that, you know, new experiences that you will get and that is going to add a lot of value. So, if you think you are stuck at something or, you know, your life has become monotonous or, you know, you, so take out time and be part of some activity which you have never done it and that kind of really helps uh, develop, uh, you know, different types of neurons or different uh, thing going on in your brain and will definitely, you know, create some amazing experiences for you that when you come back, and do your task, whatever that you were doing previously, you will be able to do it much more faster and more effective way. Uh, so be a yes man, you know, say yes to a lot of activities and, you know, try it out. And then if it doesn't work out, that's, that's fine. But at least you tried it and now you have an experience about it. Uh, the next point is about the action, which reduces press, stress. Uh, so last week or so, you know, I was uh, uh, watching this video uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, he was talking about uh, stress. So what he said simply was that stress comes when uh, you are not taking action, you are thinking about it, you know, that, you know, there is some problem and then you are thinking about it over and over, okay, you know, and then you are not actually doing anything. What Jeff said that, you know, rather than overthinking, what you do is just go out and take action. Take the first step that you know. Maybe that step is wrong. Maybe, you know, it's not the correct direction. But you took the first step. While you are in action, imagine that, you know, you are, uh, let's say, running a marathon. You will not be stressful, basically, running marathon. Because you are running. Now your focus is on running your body, your uh, breathing pattern and everything, right? So when you are in, you know, action mode, you will not have other thoughts coming into your mind and that reduces stress. So there is... This is the simple technique. When something comes, you know, you, you, you think like, oh, I have to do these assignments, so I have to submit these project at my company or whatever. Basically, take action, whatever it can be. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, you know, really helpful for students as well. Goal settings uh, is uh, one final uh, advice. I would say that, you know, you have to define your goals. Of course, you need to graduate from USC, let's say with 3.8, 3.9, whatever GPA that you have set. But apart from that, you also have to set some different goals uh, that are really, you know, you really would want to achieve them, you know, that, you know, more networking, you know, great friends or uh, new skills that I want to develop or, you know, uh, become a leader or better communicator or, you know, something like that. Now, just goal setting is not enough. That dream, that hope needs a plan. So, unless and until you're, you know, you're not planning, uh, you know, just writing goals and, you know, filling up all those diaries and are not going to help out. Make a basic plan that, uh, let's say, whatever is your goal, what can you do 
uh, you know, in one year to achieve your goal or what, and then break it down again, like what can you do for, you know, in one month or what can you do in one week and what can you do tomorrow to achieve that. So once you do that, that will create a great path for you. Uh, so that's that. We'll move to the next uh, slide. So we talked about all this. Now I'm going to just give you short uh, one-liners about what I do so that uh, you may have some relevant questions for me uh, towards the end. So after my graduation, of course, you know, I shared in my timeline that I returned to India and I started, uh, you know, uh, different companies. So Atulsa Technology is my software development firm where we are, we are both enterprise software development company as well as we have both product as well as services division. So we make uh, ERP solutions, MISs, we make uh, HRM systems, business intelligence tools and all that. Plus, we also have launched Megastores, which is an online social and video commerce based marketplace. So when I say video commerce, what happens is that, you know, just like Instagram live, many artisans and sellers can go live, uh, you know, selling their products, like I am showing a product to you, and you as a customer can directly purchase it. But Megastores is only focused on handmade products. That means everything handmade is part of our store. We also have created a virtual division, which we call it Atulsia VR, which is nothing but, uh, you know, where we develop a lot of AR, VR, and MR uh, based, you know, uh, uh, products basically for customers. And we also have Atulsia Labs. So Labs is uh, an R&D division in our company where uh, we say that, you know, apart from the regular things that we are doing, you know, our product lines, our revenue generation, all these services, we also, you know, spend time on to developing new products which eventually, you know, so this R&D division for any company is very important. When company is small, when they want to grow, all they have to do is start adding more and more services, better services to their existing customers. What can they do about it? So this, this is the R&D division uh, uh, in our company. Uh, next, uh, I think the clicker, yeah. You have to click on the slide. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, these are some of our customers, uh, Coca-Cola, Carlsberg, Unilever. We have customers from various uh, industries and domains, logistics, you know, audiovisual, education, uh, retail, entertainment, chemical, uh, hospitality. So, you know, uh, I'm just sharing so that towards the end you might have some relevant question. It might be useful to you. Uh, and these are the labs, basically, that you see on screen. So we have created many softwares and hardware-based products like Sia, second from the first row, is a platform, uh, it's an app uh, for visually blind people. They can give voice commands and it will read your WhatsApp messages or your emails. And uh, so you can do that, uh, you know, so visually blind people can, uh, uh, you know, do this or you can also use it while you are driving or something like that where you are not supposed to use your phone. So you can say, hey Sia, you know, read my WhatsApp messages and it will read all your messages one by one you know, in groups and it will read who said what and, you know, things like that. So, like that, there are many Bluetons, Inform, Stay Connected, various uh, products that we have built and we have also sold to many of our customers to, you know, start using it. So, these are the labs. It keeps the innovation within the company alive, you know. When there is a monotonous work for some developers, let's say, you know, in my company there are uh, many software developers, so when they feel like, you know, hey, you know, I need to do something different, they propose an idea and they say, hey, you know, uh, one company has done it, if we tweak it, you know, there will be a really good app or something like that. So we do allocate some time uh, in our company also for people to make such, uh, you know, uh, products. So we call them labs. Eventually they become products and be part of our... So why did I start? So there is few things about it. So there is a lot of... So I have two why's, right, for Atulsia Technologies and for Megastores. So automation is everywhere, you know, and that is why we are building all these softwares. You know, everything is getting automated, you know, through the use of hardware, software, or mix of technology. And uh, whatever that we see right now, you know, driverless cars, or, you know, we see chat GPT, or, you know, we see all these tools. Uh, just imagine that this is just getting started. And in next 10 years or 15 years, things are going to be totally different than what we see today. So, because there is so much automation happening, thus there is a huge demand in the market for companies to, you know, build such tools, basically. And that's 
why we are doing what we are doing at Atulsia Technologies. And there are many industry applications, you know, we build different systems and processes and winning the change is all about this change that we are talking about. What is changing? Everything is changing. You know, technology is changing, our lifestyles are changing, uh, economy is changing, you know, there are so many factors, uh, you know, uh, affecting, uh, you know, all this change. So there is constantly this change is happening and for us, our customers also this change is happening, right? So when we win that change, that means we are able to, uh, you know, uh, we are a lifelong learner company. When we develop more tools, when we have more techniques, you know, to win this change, we are winning this change for our customer. And that's the uh, tagline of our company that whatever is the change, we want to get two step ahead uh, and, you know, win that change and, you know, provide the best solutions for our company. Um, the why for Megastores, which is a social marketplace, uh, is, the, is the startup uh, which we have recently started. So, in India, there are more than... Um, 10 million artisans, I would say there are even more than that basically. An artisan, who is an artisan? Artisan is someone uh, with the use of his craft technique, you know, is able to build a product. Uh, it can be any product. It can be part of a kitchenware, it can be apparel, it can be uh, home decor item, it can be anything, right? Now once these products are developed, you know, they need to be sold and the, the usual techniques are like exhibitions or through local retail and there is online as well. So what we are actually providing a platform like other marketplaces, but only dedicated for handmade products. And that is what we call it megastores.com, everything handmade. And um, we are uh, right now present in more than 14 different states in India. And eventually we want to cover every uh, you know state in India where currently we have around 7,000 plus handmade products. So we are trying to grow, add more and more products on the platform, more sellers, more artisans, so that, uh, you know, there is, a, uh, they get chance to, you know, sell these products globally. Uh, so we are a global platform uh, and that's what uh, basically we are working on. Okay, so now <clears throat> I talked about uh, USC experience, I talked about my journey, the companies and everything. My main focus today is, uh, uh, about the entrepreneurship, the journey of any entrepreneur, you know, and what all different things uh, that one needs to follow, what has been the experience, what are the challenges and things like that. So I want to pause for a bit and just to get a sense of all of you, um, just to understand that uh, any questions so far, did you guys follow or uh, uh, up till now and any, any, any comments that you have? Now I'm going to focus on the entrepreneurship as a subject and basically my experience, whatever that I have and talk a little bit about that, some frameworks and all that. So you can unmute and uh, share uh, with me, uh, that'll be really good. And I request uh, if you can turn on your cameras, that'll be really good uh, to see you. Uh, even if you're not ready and you want to just say hi, that's totally fine. That'll be really awesome uh, to see you guys. Um, but yeah. Uh, any any comments uh, 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 from you till now? All okay? I, I actually have uh, some comments, Kailash. So when you were saying in the beginning, um, uh, be a yes man, that's what you were saying. That's, so <laughs> I started in Viterbi, but eventually what I do now is nothing to do with what I studied, but it was what I wanted to do. Um, I'm sure being Indian, you can appreciate that we can either choose, you know, doctor, engineer, lawyer. My brother went doctor, I went engineer. But I didn't want to do that. So um, I got to what I'm doing now uh, basically just by being a yes man, like you said, is I would, all I had was extra time on my hands. I didn't have skills. I didn't have money. So just, uh, you know, offer my time to anybody that would let me do anything. And that's sort of how I got to the job I'm at right now, which I, which I do really like now. Superb, superb. Uh, amazing comment. I would say this has, whatever your last few seconds, the statement that you have uh, provided, I think the younger generation needs to really understand that part. Because we come from, everybody, you know, we come from that uh, family pressure or, you know, that sort of a societal thing that, you know, you have to do this, this, this. And uh, we don't try things. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, 
in india there was one movie uh, which was very famous three idiots and we talked about uh, that you know find your passion you know find your passion and do only work into that you know it was all about that you like photography you do photography uh, you like this you do that but then the main question is how do i know what i like and even at the age of 40 50 you know the kfc guy started maybe at 65 or something like that right so how do i know what i really like or what I'm passionate about. And that's the answer I think Zaman talked about that be a yes man and say yes, go to Austria or go to, you know, some place where you haven't been and, you know, be part of one tracking uh, group or, you know, uh, attend a computer science event or, you know, attend such seminars where, you know, a guy from India is coming to, you know, <laughs> talk about entrepreneurship and learn about his story, right? One idea, you know, can change your life. And that's what like, you know, Zaman has beautifully in short has talked about. And this is something that everybody needs to learn that lives uh, our bigger goals or, you know, our likeness or our destiny is actually, you know, hidden somewhere. You have to go out and explore unless and until you try, how will you know that what you like? So you have to try different things and be a yes man. In going forward, I'm also going to say to become a no man, but then uh, in a different context. But this is yes man, when you are young, of course, you know, uh, you can be a yes man throughout your life, but there is a context to it when you also have to say no to it. But then this is, uh, thank you, thank you Zaman for that comment. Uh, any, anybody else? Anything so far? Uh-huh, yes. As, oh, thank you, Jenny. Yeah, I was just going to add to that. It's Professor Weiss here. Also, from the student standpoint, be a yes man at school, as as you're talking about. Like, fight, you know, use that opportunity because USC just basically that's our whole. That's what we're doing here is creating opportunities for young people. So if you use those opportunities, I, I do remember Zaman. He, he's, a, he's an alum, but I remember him when he was here and he was kind of like you. He would just say yes to things and he didn't have a clear sense of what he was trying to do. But he was like, you know, I'm just going to go to the talk and listen to this guy. It doesn't seem to have anything that interests me really, but I'm just going to go. And, and that's the way he approached everything and, and exactly. now doing great work in, in Austin. So. Super. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Professor. So, you know, that was the comment for students also uh, that, you know, this is the time when we are young, uh, we have USC like atmosphere, so vibrant, so dynamic, there are hundreds of things happening every day. And that's what I said, you know, about making your calendar. Yes, just go out and say, yes, I'm going to do this or yes, I'm going to do that. But after your academics and your assignments or your lectures, whatever time left, you have to say yes to things and you know try out. Uh, so that's the thing. So now let's quickly jump into the journey of an entrepreneur. Uh, this is the subject I wanted to share. Uh, there are a few um, tricks or you know few I would say formulas, few things here and there I'm gonna share. And uh, towards the end we'll do some uh, Q and A. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> it has been nine years. Uh, you know since my first company you know started and basically. Uh, it has been a great experience, I would say, uh, to work with people, uh, to, you know, get from ideas to products and, you know, the execution is mattering the most and, you know, rather than the ideas and how uh, you have to take different detours and, you know, just try to make sure that, you know, your products or services are really creating uh, that impact that is needed. So, what is the journey? So, you know, if you talk about the... Uh, character attributes in the sense that, you know, as an entrepreneur, who, who you are or, you know, what you should be doing basically, right? So that's the question that, you know, and entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, it's all about my startup, you know, these things are like, you know, are sort of exaggerated uh, in a way. But then in a simple term, I would say uh, a leader, you know, it starts with the leadership, right? A leader so definition of a leader, can someone give me a definition of a leader, like from the group? Like who is a leader? Anybody wants to try? Leader is someone? Uh, I guess someone who listens to people that are in support and uh, able to provide direction to achieve a common goal. Yeah, yes. Anybody else? 
who is a leader? What, what, what does it mean to be a leader? Someone who sets an example. Who sets an example, correct, yes. So leadership is all about taking action. You know, leadership is responsibility. Leadership in simple word is responsibility. If I say, let's say, you know, there is a class going on and there is a window open and teacher is like, you know, can someone close the window? The guy who stands up first, not necessarily the guy who is in the first row, but who stands up first and say, yeah, yeah, I am going to do that, he took action. You know, he, he thinks that, okay, you know, I am responsible. The ability to take action, right, that is a leader. Now, he does not know whether he will be able to close the window or, you know, people will laugh at him, he may fail or things like that. The person who is able to take action, he says, I am responsible, me, me, me then that is the best quality, you know, this person is a leader, whether he has his own company or he is working with any company. So entrepreneurship does not mean that, you know, I need to be my own boss and, you know, I have all the flexibility of time, I can do whatever I want. No, this is all garbage, basically. You can be an entrepreneur in any company that you are at or, you know, you are working or you will be working, basically. With new ideas, you can create some new solutions and you can propose to your team, your manager, director and say, you know, this is what going to uh, help our company. And they say, yeah, you know what, you're right. And th there you go. And then you are able to, uh, you know, work towards that idea and say, you know, can I have uh, these two people work with me in a team and then we develop something. And so that's what your, you know, leadership quality is all, all about. So you are already an entrepreneur that way. So entrepreneurship is very much closely connected with leadership and leadership is all about responsibility. Taking that responsibility is all about uh, that. So now when we talk about that, this is the attitude or you know, this is the main character which is required. You do not have to be a know-it-all person that I know everything, you know, then only I can start a company or you can, you know, it's, it is not required. All you need is a positive mindset and say, yes, I am going to try it out and I am going to, you know, work. Uh, fully onto this idea and then persistence is what is required, you know, the persistence that you will not, so, you know, I, I, I often um, like, you know, talk to, you know, a lot of students basically in India and they say, you know, uh, in one of the networking event when I was uh, uh, there, uh, so they were introducing like this, you know, me and this guy, we have a startup and then another guy, you know, we have a startup and, you know, something like that. They, they are making it so casually. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to like, you know, what have you done, you know, uh, did, did you get some breakthroughs or what you, so we are trying, we'll see, you know, how that works out. So this is, this, I call it, this is not like an outing that, you know, I'm going to try it for a couple of years and see what happens and then I'm going to uh, leave it. No, you have to, you have to give more time, persistence, you know, that consistency is required. There will be a lot of ups and downs and then maybe in two years, maybe in three years, maybe in four, five, six years, you might get breakthrough. You might not even get breakthrough like that. So it is all about that. So that characteristics is the main requirement that you have that willpower that, you know, no matter what happens, I believe in this idea and I'm going to execute, I'm going to go full fledged into this one and somewhere you will definitely get a success. You might have to take a detour, as I said, like, you know, your initial prototype or something that you had thought about might not be the right one. But then, hey, you know, you took that path, somebody, you know, gave you uh, the right answer, you know, suggested something and then you chose that path, you went ahead and like that, right? So when, when, when you know, let's say I came from uh, <coughs> uh, Bay Area to LA driving, so I took, you know, different freeways, right? You know, whatever, then I-5 and then, you know, 404 or whatever, you know, I forgot the names, all that, right? So, but they all lead me to LA, for example, but I took different path, that's fine, but I had decided that I have to go and I have to reach in six hours, you know, so that is what is all about. So that characteristics, uh, you know, individual characteristic uh, is uh, very important that, you know, what you actually uh, intend to do and uh, you have to. There are a lot of uh, uh, frameworks that, you know, one can follow. Uh, I would like to start with, you know, the uh, art of storytelling, uh, basically. So. As an entrepreneur, you will have to sell yourself all the time. I am selling myself right now, basically. You know, in the 
uh, in this lecture I talked about my companies basically you know one or two things you might remember and you'll talk to a few of your friends or something like that you may not or you may but then I am always selling as an entrepreneur you're always selling selling on your ideas about your products your services whatever that you have so when you want to sell something uh, what you have to do you have to learn the art of storytelling right uh, have you seen that uh, Leonardo movie uh, where he's saying, you know, guys, sell me this pen, right? What was the movie name? I forgot that. Anybody knows that movie? Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that pen, how, how, do you, how do you do that? So that story, you know, that is the most important thing. You know, that narration, what is that backstory? Why you're doing it? What is your intention? You know, the audience needs to understand that, you know, why you are doing what you are doing, Simon Sinek thing, right? So you have to express that and this is the best characteristic and whatever that you can do i would say either take classes you know be part of various seminars uh, be part of some public speaking or you know uh, such uh, conferences or such activities where you uh, get a chance to tell your story uh, so you have to be a great storyteller uh, getting into the act and staying in the game i already you know talked about that uh, we also uh, uh, you know, uh, as a as an entrepreneur, uh, it starts with one idea, but then ultimately you have to build a team, and that is the most important thing I would say. Like team building is the most important, where you have to have a people skills. You are not working alone. You have to work with people. You have to understand collaboration exactly. You know, someone wrote it. So you have to know whose skills are you know useful uh, in which areas you have to identify those areas and you know use it for your uh, idea or you know your startup and all that the art of reaching out i would say this is uh, one technique uh, i'd like to share few stories about it uh, where you have to work towards uh, reaching out to people uh, you cannot just give up on some something like so one quick story about mega stores wherein uh, uh, let's say I needed an appointment of one person. So this video is getting recorded and you know, I just wanted to keep things anonymous. So this person uh, has sold uh, uh, her company for more than 100 crores, uh, Indian rupees, right? And uh, she knows many things about my company and I need an appointment with her, you know? So what do I do? So I have got a uh, few connections, so I started okay, now how can I reach this person? This person doesn't know me, I know her, but I know her from the story, like just like I know Elon Musk, but Elon Musk doesn't know me, right? That way, same thing. So how do I reach out, right? So this is the statement. So the art of reaching out. So can some of you uh, share some ideas that, you know, this is the uh, thing that I want to do. How do I reach out? What all different things I should be doing? so that I get what I want, right? So I, I already talked about my want. My want is I need the guidance from her. I need her to be my company's advisor, how she sold her company in my domain only for 100 crores to, you know, a bigger uh, company. Uh, so I want to get involved, right? That's my want. And uh, I just know her. I don't have any resources right now. What are my uh, action items? What should I be doing, basically? So, you know, someone says be active on social media platforms. So, that's a general statement. I need like one, two, three, four, like action plan that will make this happen. So can someone unmute and say, yeah, you know, you can do something like this. Um, I always use persistence. <laughs> I'm just, I, I reach out from every angle I could possibly can through people, through uh, if it's uh, email I have, uh, social media, I call their office. And uh, again, like I said, I just offer whatever I can offer to hopefully bring some value as well. Absolutely. Yes. Brilliant. Yes, that's the one. Can someone else also share? Someone who has not spoken, maybe Kritika or uh, Sahil, maybe uh, anybody. One more person sharing idea. The problem statement is known, right? This is what I shared, that this is what I want to do. How do I do that? Just try it. You know, as I said, the window example, you might not be able to close the window, but just try, right? That's the first quality of a leader. Just try it out. I might be wrong. Just give any solution. 
Yeah, I think uh, in reaching out, you're you're bound to face barriers where you know one person's going to say no, they're busy, you can't talk to them, and you you kind of try different ways to still get that connection. Um, you know, whether that's a no on the first time or the second time or even the third time, you still keep pushing to to find a way in. Exactly. Yeah. So let me let me close the story because we have a lot of other things to cover. So what I did, this is a real story. Okay. So I'm just. Um, not uh, naming the company or naming the people uh, uh, in this particular uh, yeah, story, but everything else is real. So uh, she lives in Delhi, uh, you know, from online Google search and everything I found out. And uh, then uh, after heavy research, I found out that she worked as an advisor for one NGO. And fortunately, I knew someone who is working at that NGO. So I called him and that, you know, this is what it is. Do you know, uh, I, I'm, I need to, you know, reach out to her uh, for uh, so and so. Uh, so let, let me give her a name. So let's say her name is Sonia, for example. So I am telling this NGO that I need to reach Sonia. Um, how do I do that? And uh, I have a number if you want, you can, I'm like, what? Yes, I need her number. So, so I got her number, I got Sonia's number. And now I cannot directly call and do that, right? I have to professionally uh, think about something, you know, messaging is the first thing. So I'm like, hey, you know, my name is Kailash. I'm founder of megastores.com. You know, I really liked your startup, your idea, you know, whatever you worked and it's amazing or something. Something I have to create. And then, uh, so I found out uh, that she is in Delhi. So when I was, when I was in Delhi, I messaged her, hey, you know, I'm in Delhi. And I wanted to reach out. I'm founder of so and so. I, I sent her a text message. No reply, right? Uh, and then nothing happened. Then again, next time when I was in Delhi, maybe after a few months, I sent her a message that maybe we can meet up. I just wanted to, you know, share about my story. I'm I, I'm gonna need some advice from you, and uh, 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 we are working on this cool stuff or something like that. And uh, I got a reply that uh, yeah, but I'm not available something like that. But I got a reply, right? So I got a reply. So this second time also, I didn't get a chance to meet. Third time when I was in Delhi. So this particular, I don't know if there is an app for this, but geolocation based reminder is the number one thing. Actually, I'm, I've told my team to build it. I don't know how much they have completed that. But geolocation based, let's say, Zaman, where are you in? Are you in Bay Area or Austin? Austin, yeah, she is in Austin. So next time when I'm in Austin, I should get an alert that, you know, Zaman is around or Sahil is around. And then I say, okay, what he is working on, right? So there will be new leads, new ideas that will come. So geolocation based my contacts reminder that will be amazing. So anyways, I used to keep, so I use uh, HubSpot as a CRM. Uh, I highly recommend you guys also to start using HubSpot where you can add your contacts in Google contacts and it directly syncs with HubSpot and then HubSpot, uh, 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 can give you reminders. So let's say, you know, I added a, uh, what you call it, a lead. Let's say I want to meet Sonia. So Sonia Delhi. And then I, when, and every time I'm in Delhi, you know, I get an alert. So third time when I was in Delhi, I again messaged her. That, you know, hey, you know, I'm here for two, three days. And it will be really great to, you know, to meet you. And this time I got the uh, invite from her. She was like, you know, come home. Uh, I'm available, 7 o'clock, this is the address. And I went to her home uh, with my friend. And, uh, you know, we had good tea and the great conversation for a couple of hours. We took a group picture and, and then guess what? What she told me? That, Kalash, when I was at your age and when I was, uh, you know, uh, you know I, this, my startup was young, I used to do the same thing. I saw myself in you, you kept at it and you tried three, four times, even if, you know, I was busy and all that. This is the only reason I've replied you back and that's the only reason we are here and meeting today. So that was a great, I would say, um, you know, lesson for me that you have to reach out to people, you know. Things will not come to you. You are not someone who is attracting, you know, things. You have to reach out. You have to go. 
and say, hey, you know, I am here and this is what I need or this is what I do, are you interested in all that. So, you know, the art of reaching out, there are a lot of techniques also that I have written on my LinkedIn. Uh, so, I uh, write a newsletter, so in that, you know, I have added. And one of the thing is that if you don't ask, you will not get it. But if you ask, you might get it, right? So, that's the thing. And there is a follow-up algorithm which uh, some of you can use it. Uh, I use it all the time is that uh, you have to keep track of how are you doing the follow up. So, let us say you know a same example so that we do not have to think a lot. Um, I need to do follow up with somebody uh, and uh, let us say Sonia. So, I send her a text message. I did not get a reply. So, from day 0 to day 3, third day I am going to send one more text message. I did not get reply. That is fine. After one week, I am going to send her one more text message, but with little different text content and everything that, you know, hey, it is Thanksgiving, I just wanted to wish you or, you know, check if it is her birthday or, you know, see if there is any festival around and you wish. Find a good reason, you know. After a week, she did not reply. Then even, then wait one more week and then send out. Now you wait one month. You increase the, you know, you double the time period. Now, you sent her a message one month after one month. So, you have already sent like five, six, seven messages. Remember, people read your emails, people read your messages, WhatsApps or whatever you are doing. It is just that cold emails, cold SMSs does not work simply. They are not liable to, you know, reply to you. Who are you in their life, right? Once they find something interesting from you, only then they will reply. So, you have to find that interesting spot or something like that. So, after a month, then after the second month, third month, like that, every month you send a reply or, you know, send him, send her a message. After a year, so you do, this is the follow-up algorithm, so you, you cannot quit. So, let us say after a month, you got a reply, wow, then your reply should be within 24 to 48 hours. Do not reply it immediately. Oh, I got a message immediately, 6 o'clock I got a message, 6 o'clock I will send on another. No, do not do that. Do not be that desperate, you know. Uh, that, you know, I needed something, you know, wait, uh, you know, 10, 15 hours or even send her a reply next day, but at least within 24 to 48 hours, your reply should go. And then you would want her reply back also because it is a conversation. But if it, now she is not, she has not replied to you in, in two days, three days, what you are going to do? Repeat the follow-up algorithm. Send a reminder in third day, then one week, then one more week, then one month, then second month like that. Imagine, this has worked out for me, not imagine, I mean literally it has worked out for me. I have got a good amount of a purchase order or I would say, you know, service order uh, from a US company after one year of follow up and it was a huge amount for me basically and my company. After one year I got a reply, you know, now is the time. Thank you for reminding Kailash that, you know, we have to build this. I have got approval from my department. I think we are ready to start with this project. Can you jump onto a me meeting next, uh, whatever? I am like, yes, I can do that right now. <laughs> like that, right? So, it is that way. You do not know how the life, uh, you know, is happening, you know, in that, uh, you know, the, uh, the other person's area or what they are facing through or what are their requirements or, you know, what they need. But you have to consistently talk about your story. So, that is the art of reaching out. Finally, this matrix, everybody... I think everybody knows this metrics, right? Anybody here uh, uh, who doesn't know this urgent important metrics? Uh, the fifth uh, one, can you see on screen? That is the fifth point, urgent important metrics. So it simply says, I, you know that, right? I, no, I have not seen it. Okay. So for students also, for professionals also, for uh, entrepreneurs or anybody for that matter, uh, I think it's called Eisenberg's metrics or something like that. But this metrics is the super useful and it's the most important thing one can uh, follow. Uh, so, you know, we talked about all these mental habits and frameworks, right? This is part of a framework. So, what it says is there are different tasks that are there in your life. You know, you have to buy milk, you have to uh, cook or you have to, you know, go walk your dog out or you have to watch Netflix, this series or you have to do homework. There are a lot of different tasks in our lives basically, personal, professional, work, community, lot of things are happening. So, how are you able to decide on which day what to do? So, you say that, you know, which tasks are urgent and which tasks are important. These are the main two factors 
and there is a difference between urgent and important. Urgent which is which is to be done now, like there is an urgent, there is a flight to catch at 5 o'clock, that means it is urgent, I have to do that, I have to book my Uber whatever 15 minutes or whatever 2 hours, 3 hours before that or right that. So that is an urgent. What is an important? Important means it is super important, it is very much useful for me. So that is the important and urgent, that is the definition. So how are you able to categorize it? So if you see in the first box, in the first quadrant, it says if a task is important as well as urgent, that means you do it. It's, it's your job to do that task. Is it understood? It is very much important for you. Important for whom? Info, important for you and urgent. That means you do it. You do the task right now. That is the highest priority. So if you are unsure about you know what all different things tomorrow I am going to do, analyze and see what are the important tasks and what are the urgent tasks. Those tasks I am going to do tomorrow. That is the, uh, the first quadrant. The second one is task is important. Okay, it is very important task, you know, but it is not urgent, it can wait. Then what you can, what you can do? You can plan it for future. You can add that task to a particular time slot, a free time slot in your calendar and you plan that task and you have to do it. So it is urgent, it's sorry, it's important but not urgent, that means you plan it. The third quadrant is a task is not important, it is not important for me, but it is urgent, right? Then see if something is urgent but it is not important, then what you do is you delegate, you give it to somebody that you know please do it. So these points are from the entrepreneur's perspective but it can be applied to anybody for that matter. That let us say uh, if I have to create invoices, right, uh, for my customers. Um, uh, that is an important one, but then let us say you know something which is uh, not very important task, but it has to be done today itself. Uh, then I can tell somebody that you know do that task and I can free up my time slot basically to you know do more urgent and important task like that. So you delegate and give it to somebody. So that is the third quarter and the fourth one, if a task is not an urgent one nor it is also not an important, then what you do is? you eliminate. Eliminate is when you do not do it basically or uh, just uh, you know remove from like you know watching a reel or you know uh, spend some time like simply browsing or something like that. It is not important or you know it is not urgent or either. So you do not do that basically. Of course you can allocate some entertainment time slot in your daily life like you know you can allocate few hours like you know that Pomodoro technique you know you can do that. After every 25 minutes of solid work, you can spend 5 minutes for refreshment or you know some something which you want to do. So that can be done. But if something is not important and not urgent, you do not do that. So this is the urgent important metrics. So you make a to-do list. To-do list is a very simple flat structure that is very confusing. You know it does not show you which one is important, which one is not urgent, priority wise this, that. That is where I showed calendar. So the calendar will only have which items? Your calendar will have only important items. Either they are important and urgent or they are important but not urgent. The rest two items they will not be part of your calendar basically. So that is the thing. Next we will go to the next one. Let us see if our thing works. Uh, and then you can ask question if you have on this. So what were the challenges you know uh, that I have faced uh, during you know uh, you know my time you know I am still you know uh, working uh, and uh, basically uh, as an entrepreneur what are the bigger challenges that you face. So this is a simple list uh, that you know people leaving you, they break up with you. <laughs> They say, no, you know what, I have got another offer, you know, I am going to head out, all the best. This company has given me so much, thank you so much, they will write, you know, so many things, but they will leave you. So that is the, uh, the challenge and that is totally okay and that is something that every entrepreneur needs to learn. No one is going to be permanent with you. Business is a science, it can be learned and you have to become so dynamic 
that your systems and processes are so solid or properly created that even if a person leaves, there is another person who can take it up and he needs to follow that SOP and all that and you will not have that bigger uh, issues in your company. But that this will become one of the challenges that people leave you, your ideas and you are like, now what do I do? The my, my main developer, my architect guy left. How, what do I do? I cannot do anything, you know, startup close. No, it cannot work like that. You have to go out, again start from zero, hunt and then do that. But now slowly build a process, create that, uh, you know, uh, uh, system in which whatever the items that this uh, architect was doing or whatever his job responsibilities were there, you document it out, create a nice structure so that any new person can actually, and someone leaving, you give a two months notice period or whatever and then you know have that structure ready so that you're not impacted. But yeah, that's a challenge. Another is a fundraising or slash making profits or something like that. So that will be the challenge where your startup initially may not have revenue. So how will you raise the fund, you know, reaching out to people, raising investment from somebody is not an easy because it's somebody's money. Uh, you can even think about bootstrapping and, uh, you know, with smaller profits slowly organically grow or, you know, take, taking bank loans or, you know, go with debt funding like that. But fundraising is going to be a challenge for an entrepreneur. Uh, next challenge, yeah, VCs come much later. Uh, next challenge is uh, getting your first few customers, right? Uh, who is the early adopter basically, you know, so you, that's the, like a bigger challenge for us and mega stores also, like I still remember the first parcel that we delivered basically, you know, I've taken a, uh, picture of that and I still have that packing, uh, package basically that corrugated box package. I got back from the customer that I want to keep it, uh, you know, for memory. I still have that. So, you know, the first few customers that you get, Basically, they are the very crucial and they are the most difficult ones. Slowly after that, it will become easy. Uh, keeping team motivated, that is again a challenge, basically. Uh, one guy left right now, you know, there are 10 people in Zoom, for example. So the 11th guy left, you know, there was some reason that, you know, maybe his internet is not working or he is like, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, this content is not for me or whatever. You as an entrepreneur will always have to... Uh, make sure that your team is motivated. Your team knows that this is what you are going to do, this is what you are supposed to do and they have that internal energy, they have that, that I am with you, I am going to get it done, you know, that sort of a spirit. Uh, and it is difficult to, you know, maintain that level. But it has to be done consistently, like, you know, it will not work out just for a day or a few weeks or a month. It has to be done month after month, year after year and then only it will happen. So that's one challenge. Uh, hiring is a bigger challenge and I would say every entrepreneur has to take up this department for sure. Whom you are adding to your team, you cannot just hire an HR and say, you know, just get me a few people. No, you have to take interviews, you have to know what this person is all about, what their likings, what, what is their motive. If their mo motive is just money, which is totally okay. You know, some people would want just money, whatever project it is, you know, give me this money. That is also okay. If they are able to get things done for you, that's fine. But then understand your uh, people, you know, the team that you are building. You need to know their uh, weaknesses, their strengths, and then you add them. So that is a thing. Marketing is again a challenge, basically. Uh, and scaling. Lastly, how to scale a company, basically, you know. So starting a company is easy. Making it profitable is also easy. You know, making company up to 20, 30 employees, uh, this strength is easy. But from 30 employees, how do you reach to 100 employees and then how do you reach to 500? Scaling is the bigger uh, issue and is the I would say that's the most important thing uh, for any business. Uh, so these are the challenges. Next, uh, importance of mentors. I'll just skip through this. So you have to, I already covered this because you have to have your boss, you know. So business, you are a startup entrepreneur. It doesn't mean that you are on boss and you can do whatever you want. You have to be disciplined enough and your mentors are your bosses. You have to uh, take advice from them. What do I do? What do I, you know, what are my mistakes? You know, what are the better ways to, you know, do these things? So, they, and you have to become a lifelong learner, basically. You cannot say, you know, I know it all. I still, 
take lot of classes on weekends i reach out to people you know learn different skills techniques and things like that and constantly learning and your mentors are your your advisors your coaches you have to have that without coaches without your advisors uh, life is not going to be that much uh, what you call it like you will be able to reach uh, where you want to be want to reach but with with the help of coaches you'll reach there faster and that's what you want it basically so those are the important items uh, <clears throat> so these are the some of the again extended learnings that everything is a science that can be learned uh, you know don't get demotivated easily so uh, you know if you open your facebook your friend buying a tesla and then you are like okay you know i would have uh, also purchased tesla if i would have worked for this company or something like that there are a lot of you know other people when you start comparing yourself with other people you will easily get demotivated what am i doing with this startup idea you know what is this what is that and all that so you have to make sure that you are mentally very strong and you are you know you are working uh, on your uh, project or idea and not getting demotivated very easily monkey on your back is what uh, uh, it's a there is a it's a case study actually that you have to learn to say no so now why i am telling you guys that why do you have to say no to is that now when you are working on this idea this thing you cannot also add one more idea one more idea one more idea you have to say no to all these ideas so learn to say no and you are working on something so monkey on your back is a case study when you search google search it you will uh, learn it it's a really good read uh, you are working on something and somebody else comes to you and say hey hey you know can you solve my problem and then you are like oh yeah yeah let me help you out and then you start uh, solving this person's problem that is done and now you are com coming back to your desk and guess what okay 5 o'clock 6 o'clock you're done for the day so you solved his problem but you didn't get chance to work on yours basically so they call it like you know there was a monkey on your back you try to you know uh, get rid of him but then uh, you know there can be second monkey third monkey so you have to say no to so rather than helping that person out immediately you can say you know what can we do it tomorrow 5 o'clock Uh, we can spend time on to this for half an hour or 30 uh, you know one hour or something so you plan that out and then then say okay i'm working on this one and then focus on what you were doing something like that so all of these things you know uh, will help ego on the side you have to make sure that there is no ego uh, anywhere if some junior teaches you some important lessons say yes thank you and uh, you know uh, move move forward anger management is also very important even if things you don't like you, you cannot express it out in public so when you have to praise somebody express in public but when you have to uh, say some improvements tell him in the private uh, con conversation that is how the uh, best practice is and uh, nothing is permanent i already talked about that you know things will change you will change your product services will take uh, you know different shape size and like that so nothing is permanent so don't think about my people will stay with me forever like that yes you have to be dynamic you have to be constantly uh, adapting to the new changes that are happening around you and you need not be a know it all person in your company or in whatever that you know you are doing you can do one or two things that you are really good at let's say you are good at marketing you are good at finance you are good at business development whatever it is but you have to just focus on that you need not be a know it all person i know this also i know this also that is not a good uh, definition I, i mean you know that's not a good characteristic of a leader you have to uh, you know delegate somebody that you know this you take care of it and then trust him and trust the process and then move on that's how uh, it has to be done then next uh, we'll go next so that i'm just rushing through so that we get some time towards the end for the questions uh so these are the some of the books that i uh, recommend reading so you can take a screenshot basically uh, corporate chanakya rich dad poor dad think and grow rich is also really great delivering happiness is about tony shay uh, he sold his company to amazon the shoe company uh, for a billion dollar like lot of i mean so many years ago monk who sold safari seven habits dream with your eyes opens and some of the biographies like steve jobs richard branson and elon musk then there is this ikigai book the japanese secret to a long uh, and happy life psychology of money who moved my cheese there are many books basically so they are going to help you out uh, you know they really solve your problem actually you know there are many examples you know one incident one story 
that will definitely will be able to correlate in your life and you might be able to find out. So, these are my two newsletter on LinkedIn. So, you can scan QR code and uh, connect. So, there is entrepreneurship 101. Uh, so, in this one I have written a few articles. So, the art, the art of reaching out or the art of storytelling, team building, all of these things and also making dreams real. Uh, <clears throat> it is all about like you know, I have my dreams, what all different things that uh, I need to do to make them real and you know, just making it an assertive statement right, making them real as if it is happening because the more positive that you are thinking towards that, your dream will actually become real. So, that is a newsletter where I keep sharing about some stories, some motivational stuff, some of my you know uh, outdoor uh, some trainings or some events and stuff like that. So, these are the newsletters. So, we will wait for the questions and uh, uh, that is about it. Yeah. Thank you so much Kailash. Um, I do have some questions. I have a lot of questions. So, maybe I will wait for other people to go first. Great. Atomic Habits, yes, Atomic Habits also a great book. Hi, I have a question and thank you for the um, presentation. Um, so, I think, you know, you mentioned um, with entrepreneurship, it usually starts with an idea and um, you have to be persistent and also as long as you have the, the confidence, it drives you to be persistent. Um, but I wanted to ask like how do you build up that confidence because I think that is something that I struggle with when I have ideas I might like them for a little bit but then um, I like am quick to talk myself out of them and lose confidence in it. Yes uh, and it is not just you, uh, everybody you know faces this problem and what I would say like uh, when, so when we, when, when we think that you know I am not confident enough, what is happening it is actually in our head right now that we think that you know whatever the solution that I am thinking may not be the right one or there are better solutions out there or we may think that there are better smarter people than me or you know. So, when you have that sort of understanding, you, you lose your confidence right now basically. I have done similar training uh, in front of thousands of people basically and uh, when you are, when you are, when you really know that what you are talking about the points that I uh, created, the slides that I made, uh, the stories which I said, some examples that I shared, I know what I am talking about. I know that I have prepared myself whatever that I knew it, I could do it and I am able to present to 10, 15 people also and to 1000 people also. Now, out of that there will be X number of X percentages uh, people who will say no, this is a bad idea or this is not the right thing. You will always find such people, right? It will happen but there will be 20 percent, 30 percent people who really like that idea and will welcome you. So, I would say develop that positive and I am going to also share quickly how, but work on that that you are, you have put in enough time and effort towards this and whatever you know it, just share. Uh, do not be afraid that you know whether it is right or wrong and when you do that, you will you'll find some wins, smaller wins that you know you will find. Now, when you keep doing it again and again and again right. So, rehearsal or you know repetitive nature and that is what actually Atomic Habits is all about. If you read that book, it is smaller you know tasks that you do repetitively daily or something like that, that eventually you know improves your skills and you know you start you realize that you know I have started gaining you know some confidence basically. Like you know for example, public speaking. Uh, you know it happens when you are uh, you know talking about something and uh, for, for the first uh, you know first uh, lecture you might not be that great enough, second lecture you will be better, you know third lecture you will be better. So, you know keep rehearsing, you know do the practice, do not just be in one zone, go out and share what you have to or what you need to do and repetitive nature will actually you know build a great confidence uh, for you. Uh, but I would like to just uh, you know ask a counter question, what is that you are trying to achieve so that I can better add uh, uh, you know good answer to that. What, what, what exactly if you do not mind sharing? I do not actually have anything like exactly right now. I think you know I currently work um, at a nonprofit job in politics in Texas, but um, sometimes I think um, about leaving you know and maybe doing my own thing. Um, 
one thing that I've considered is like a night market, which, you know, are big in, in other countries. There's some big ones in, in uh, California, but they don't really exist in Texas as much. And so I think that that would be a really fun project. But um, yeah, I definitely haven't done any of the like preparation on it so much yet. Understood. Understood. So now I understood. So I have one <coughs> uh, uh, clear, uh, like, you know, uh, few points uh, that I can share. So it is a simple thing that, you know, I'm working, but uh, maybe I think I should be doing something. Should I quit? If I do that, what will happen? Whether the new thing that I'll do, whether it will be successful or not, something like that. So what happens in this one is that first understand that the new idea that you are trying Make sure that you have decided that I'm going to spend this much time into it, right? And I'm going to stick to it. If you think really positive about it, then only quit. The second point is that start working on that idea while you're working at your current role, whatever it is, yeah? you know, on the weekends or at nights and all that. I have done that myself. While I was at a full-time job, I was also, you know, helping a startup at night time and on the weekends and ultimately that became my main thing uh, slowly so you have to do that like in a part time you have to start third thing is google it now why i say i google it that you know a lot of times we don't understand things and googling it is the first action that i took let's say i i don't know how to fly an aircraft for example right i don't know i'm not you know pro at it i don't know so i say how do i fly an aircraft whatever links that are coming first 10 links at least go through that read and you know spend time and so preparation is very important basically without preparation don't take a, like you know action that just like you know you thought about it i'm gonna do it no you have to you know the, the risk you know you have to analyze it well and then you take that action so preparation is very important spend time into whatever is that problem statement just google it now you can chat jp it or you know you can do that and try to understand that what are the actionable items that I can do that. So whatever that you are trying to achieve, what are the few actions that will help me move two steps closer towards my goal, basically. So I think that will be the easiest thing uh, to start with. Don't think about the, you know, the end goal right now. What are the two, three things that will help me move to the, you know, next, uh, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> next thing that I want to achieve. So I think when you do this, uh, you will start developing, uh, that so first of all you have to be confident uh, enough to yourself only you have to be you have to believe in yourself that yes you're gonna be able to do it and you're gonna make it happen once you are stronger enough inside then outside is just uh, you know it's piece of cake basically it will it will work it out you have to be strong within yourself and how it will come once you have that knowledge once you have all the once you have done all the preparation once you have done everything all the research and uh, uh, then you can take that uh, uh, step i would say thank you for asking this is really helpful thank you i appreciate it thank you okay next question Hey, Kailash. So actually, that was going to be one of my questions was, uh, you know, you're Googling it, but that also is one of the scariest things. It's like, okay, you're Googling and you see people with a lot more money, a lot further in the journey than you. And it's like, okay, well, why am I going to do this? You know, how, why, now, why is this going to work out? And, you know, they're already doing it, right? So th that that's part of, um, I think, what Amber was getting at and uh, what I feel as well. Um, the other thing is, we always hear about the people that took their last penny and put it into their business. And it that's when it, you know, really went crazy. That's when it went, took off. Right. But you don't hear about the people that took their last mortgage payment and then the business still didn't take off. Right. And then that it's that fear. It's like, okay, I'm not going to take someone else's money, but I'll spend my money. But how much of my money do I spend? How much of my time do I put to this thing? Before I say, okay, let's call it and, you know, forget the positive mindset at that point. I could try to be an athlete right now, basketball player, as much as I want, and it's not going to happen. But how much time do I put to that to, you know, become a basketball player? Yeah, uh, great questions. Uh, the multiple things that I'd like to share and also to connect uh, with Amber's last answer. So Googling definitely, you know, sometimes will also uh, confuse you because there are multiple answers that you'll have. But at least out of 10 things, you'll find some majority percentage. 
six, 60 percent or 70 percent people are talking about this. And now the next thing is, see, Google lists down all the sites. Sites have content. Somebody would have written that content, right? So when someone has written that content, it will have some names, basically. So now Amber can actually reach out and you know, uh, take help of mentors, basically. She needs to connect with mentors, basically, who are, who have done this before, or, you know, whatever that uh, job market that she was talking about, someone is already into it. So she needs to reach out and ask them, basically, you know. Uh, so when I was in uh, Bay Area, you know, I, I simply would like to, you know, share that. So I reached out to my friend, uh, you know, just like that. I'm like, you know, uh, uh, let's see if she's around and all that. And then on her LinkedIn, I found out that uh, basically she works at Tesla, for example, right? And I actually had planned to visit Tesla and see if I can get a factory visit. And now you know what? I got a uh, person, my friend right there. She is a soft, senior software engineer. I was like, can I get a visit at Tesla? And guess what? She is like, you know, yes, I can plan something out. Let me check that for you. And I'm actually waiting on that one. I don't know if I'll get that or not. But then this is something that, you know, I got an answer immediately, right? That I had some mm -hmm. wish, something, but then I took help of somebody. So taking help is very much needed. You talk to somebody, find out a mentor, you know, buy a LinkedIn premium account, you know. You can email them, send them a message, and you'll probably hear back from them. And, you know, people will really like it. You know, when you ask them for help and if people think that they can solve someone's problem, that's the biggest thing, you know, that we are like, you know, uh, we are all selfish human beings that, you know, when we do some community service, we feel really good about it that I did something. So if you actually ask question to people, they will feel great about it. So, you know, just I would say after Googling it, find person who are associated with that problem or that domain and get the help, uh, get help from them. Now about uh, Zaman's question about how long should I continue, what are the trade-offs and, you know, things like that. So one thing for sure that, uh, you know, there is very popular company in India, uh, Book My Show, uh, basically. So it's a ticketing booking platform where you can uh, book tickets of uh, movies and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, things, you know, all the cricket matches and, you know, all things like that. That company would have started maybe, you know, uh, 15 years, 20 years back, basically. And it was bootstrapped and, you know, that guy had little to no money, basically. And during that time, no VCs or angel investors, nothing was there, basically. And he had put his father's money or their own family income and all that. He believed in that idea that there is no unique ticket book booking platform in India that can serve purpose and, you know, that has all these details and, you know, it works properly and all that. He continued at it. So that is one answer. If you think that idea is really good according to you and your research, because you have to do thorough research. He, this Book My Show guy did not blindly went ahead and, you know, put all his money. He knew that there is no competitor in the market. So you have to first understand the market, I would say. Do enough research, study and see if there are any competitors out there. You know, you can purchase some plans. You can actually get their financial details also. So by, you know, spending some hundred, two hundred dollars or whatever it is, you can actually get company's data. See what was their last year's revenue, you know, how much profit that they are booking and uh, what is year on year uh, their uh, growth is all about. And then understand the trend and see if I really want to get into this. And so market research is very important, you know, learn about your competitors, what they are doing. So for mega stores also, we have done, you know, some research that, you know, these are the other competitors how they are running, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, revenue comes from which streams major and st stuff like that. So that's the answer to your first uh, thing that really understand and narrow down your idea. Believe that, you know, that is going to work. Then you can continue working on it. But I would say for three to four years is an ideal time. You know, one or two years is not good enough. According to me, at least three to four years are good time because see what happens is after this period, because of technology changes, there are a lot of things changes here and there. The jobs which were there five years ago may not be now, they are not, you know, available or something like that. They are keep, they are changing it all the time. So you have to allocate time according to uh, that. And uh, money-wise, whether, you know, borrow money or, you know, <coughs> uh, do it on your own. So I would say, if you can, take the bank loan or debt funding first. That's the main thing because you don't want to, you know, lose on your equity and all that. But if you really think there is an urgency required, 
that if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it and I'm, I'm not going to be able to get the max benefit out of it. Then go out and, you know, go behind the investors. You know, look, I need it. It is going to work out. It will become big. Just believe in me, you know, something like that. So if you believe that strongly, then you can, you know, get the ventures funding and uh, basically uh, work on uh, that idea. But yes, you really have to understand it. And also on the side, whatever is the secondary plan B that you thought about that, you know, if not this, then this, then continue that for part time, I would say for, you know, 10, 20 percent of your time you can spend on to that. It will also give you a break from your original work. And while doing that plan B, you might be able to, you know, uh, you might encounter some new ideas or something or some new leads, which will eventually help plan A as well, basically. So I would say that's what I would suggest that way. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I did want to ask you, so on your, you, you showed us a page with all your different projects. Um, and I think there was an and more at the bottom. Uh, how, I guess, how, how do you, how do you break up your time between all of this? Or is it mainly your teams working on them? And then one that maybe gets some traction is then you, you focus on it or how does that work? Yeah. So, Basically, it has, it has changed over the period of time, uh, basically. Initially, I really liked, and now also, I also really like product design. The product development, how the end product will look like, what will be the user's experience, and what all features that we need to add. These things that, you know, uh, comes from me, uh, the rest team takes care of it, basically. So you have to delegate uh, things. And also, the business development side uh, is done by me. That, you know, how, what are going to be the, you know, uh, you know how the revenue generation plan or, you know, how it is going to. So these two things are uh, done by me. The product, uh, customer facing uh, product, how it is going to look like and what is the business side of it? Like, how am I going to earn money from it? These are the two things I take care of it. The rest team takes care of it. Like once we have that requirement, they do all the team meetings, they do design, development, testing, you know, delivery, uh, and everything uh, of this sort. So my time goes into, you know, these two areas. And also I spend time on to, so I spend on time on to learning new uh, techniques, basically, you know, so I talked about lifelong learner, right? So what things are happening, what my competitors are building, you know, so I also, you know, uh, attend a lot of networking events, a lot of conferences, you know, last, uh, uh, last, uh, you know, la few weeks, uh, two weeks ago, I was at the conference, uh, India Mobile Congress where Prime Minister of India, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi ji had come. I had gotten chance to, re you know, really be near him uh, with a proximity pass and, you know, we did a lot of, uh, uh, you know, networking there and I found really great leads, uh, you know, from one from Japan, one from, you know, uh, US and all that. So when you do that, when you explore, uh, th uh, this is when you go back to your team and say, you know what, in this conference I learned from this. A person or so and so technology Ericsson is building or so and so like that and then you share with them and then hear from your team what is their opinion and all that so uh, the team stuff is also done by me so uh, product uh, customer facing uh, the business development part networking uh, and uh, the people stuff so people's uh, questions their uh, doubts their fears their anger or whatever it is I need to you know handle that so that is also done by me, like that. Got it. And, and another question, I guess, to, to go back on, backwards on that. How did you decide between, you know, putting the whole team, focusing all the resources on one of those projects versus, okay, let's cast a wide net on, you know, open, let's do all of this stuff and see what, what works? Absolutely. So that was uh, our initial, uh, I would say, uh, challenge that we were building a lot of products, basically. But then we did not, if someone asked, what is your hero product? We did not have any answer. A hero product is some product which generates maximum revenue for your company, and we did not have answer. So we were like, you know, we cannot keep building all these products. So then what we did is we created labs division instead. We said whatever products that we built, we are not going to pursue all, but we are going to pitch and allow our customers to start using it and customize it 
and we made it open for our customers basically that you know we have this much done if you want to take it forward so they will also save some cost like some money because it is already half done and uh, so we 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 decided that uh, as a team and then only focused on one product that is mega stores that was also a lab at one point in time that you know we just wanted to build an e-commerce platform that is not using any of the usual technology everything is from scratch right so we built that basically and so team decided this is what we want to focus on and we uh, so it was actually a team's effort and ultimately you definitely run your numbers and see that you know which product or services you know in future it is going to work out or you know uh, it will be so e-commerce is here to stay e-commerce will take you know different types of shapes and size and all that you know it will happen uh, so that's why we stick to that and uh, basically we just the other labs we are not really focused on the c app or rokda or you know different things that i talked about they are now there for customers to pursue it and they will pay us to use these labs basically so we are not building our own products that way yeah royalties type of a thing or it is also called as a opex model so where uh, you know uh, you are uh, just uh, the customer will pay for only for operational expenses and you know so it's a win win situation that way yep do we have any uh, do we have time for more questions or we do yeah if you have uh, yes definitely uh, okay so i wanted to go back to the page that was i think after a uh, journey of an entrepreneur okay got it journey of an entrepreneur here uh right here no, yep it's right here so um i think we touched on the first part which is actually getting started and then you have these issues right so within this um what do you do to keep your team motivated without sounding uh repetitive or you know okay we've heard this boss <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's uh it's very tricky but uh, usually uh, so usually what i do is that uh, uh, i share the case studies with my team about whatever same products or services that we are building and i compare it and say, I, i compare it and say that why we are going to be better when we launch it versus the uh, other customer so that actually gives them a uh like really i would say like you know the upfront knowledge that we are not building something in the dark there is already something out there so that is the first thing second thing is about the money part so money is definitely you know helps us out so i have to give them good raise or something like that so practical right we are just talking about uh, practical uh, solutions so that is uh, something that works out third is a role change so if someone imagine uh, like a software tester who who is doing a manual or automation testing basically for a company if i give this person a uh, some management role basically then they will stay so sometimes you know so for every person the requirement is different so i have to so i do one to one with them i actually have set up a quarterly one to one with all of my team members basically where i say that hey you know what is happening so i know what are the things that they want to do in oh, you know, everybody's goals are different basically someone wants a really steady life and you know no more extra this thing someone uh, they are go getters they want to you know double their uh, income every two years or whatever that thing right so everybody's requirement different so you as an entrepreneur or as a team uh, leader or someone needs to know what your team really wants and that you can only do it uh, you know from one to one so so from one to ones i maintain everybody's document also like you know xyz one to one you know abc one to one and write down their points that you know what do they really want so someone needs a role change someone needs better money someone needs a clarity uh, research based uh, this one someone needs uh, your company's uh, goals that okay you know we are building all this but by when you think uh, you know mega stores will get funding or by when you think we will become a, like a billionaire a billion dollar company or you know by when uh, you think you know such questions basically so they need all these long term answers also and what they really need is your passion that if you are giving 100% into it then half of the battle is won basically it's not that you know i come up with some new stories and they will believe me 
you know, nobody is like, you know, that, uh, I would say, stupid in a way. They understand stuff. You rightly said that, you know, it's okay, all these story bars, but what, what's happening? You know, give me something. So they understand everything. But when you show yourself dedicated, like you are 100% into this, then they will, everybody, you know, we are all human beings. We understand that. You know, that, that thing really works out. That, you know, look, this guy is really trying and he is trying his level best. His product or idea is also good. At one point in time, he will definitely get a breakthrough and I will be part of that story as well. Uh, so some people will understand that part and they will stay. So, yeah. Bigger story. Yeah, what's your bigger story? That way. But yeah, they naturally, you know, they will not believe in any random story that you'll say, oh, you know, we'll do this or we'll do that. Things like that. But it's difficult. So all of these three to four solutions that I have given, it may not work for someone. I have lost many people basically. In COVID times, I have lost many people. Uh, you know, many of my uh, senior developers also because during that time, the salaries were double or 3x or 4x also. You know, uh, that random. So at some point in time, you have to, I mean, you can say I can do this much, but then not anymore. So that's fine basically. But then I found out, so in COVID times when I lost, uh, you know, three important guys actually in my team, uh, in same year, 2020, I'm like, how am I going to survive or, you know, my projects will not, uh, you know, co get completed on time and all that. I was under that, you know, stressful situation, you know, during that time. But then when the new person took over, in few months, everything was back to normal. So then I realized that, people will change, things, they will move on. So you can only do X amount of, you can only spend X amount of hours or this much effort. After that, don't become very much desperate. If they are going, then, then you have to, you know, uh, say okay and, uh, but things will work out. So as I said, systems and processes, when they are so strong, even if person is leaving, uh, it will not uh, create any problem. I don't know if anybody has complained about iPhone 15 Pro design because Johnny Ive has already left the company. You know, has anybody done that? No, something like that. Uh, so it's that way. But yeah, these are the few tricks, not tricks, but <laughs> some uh, um, solutions that uh, can make uh, your people to stay with you. Yeah, but you yourself have to be 100% into this. If you're trying here and there doing some left right thing, your social media is telling something and then your work uh, environment is different. It has to be same. My stories are, I have always kept my stories transparent with my team. Whatever I am posting on LinkedIn or my Instagram or anything, they know what I am doing for sure. Everything. So that is something that has helped me as well. There is nothing that I need to hide from my team. I can probably hide things from my family but not for my, uh, you know, uh, for my team. That has actually happened. Yeah. So that is very important. Because now you are much relaxed, right? Whatever that you are doing, you are doing it. Everybody knows it. You don't need to, because you, you need to, your, our brain is a, is a uni processor. We don't have a multitasking CPU here. We only do time division multiplexing, TDM. We are not a multi-core, this one. When we are doing multiple tasks in one day or you know at the same time, we are dividing time here and then we are switching, switching, something like that. So we can do only X amount of time. The more you keep your brain relaxed or you know, everything is on your calendar, he calendar is reminding you, uh, you don't have to worry about all these secrets, this thing, that thing, that will make your life much easier and you know, give time for you to solve the bigger problem that really matters. Yeah, less mental pressure x number of modes. What does it mean, x number of modes? Psi, that I didn't get. Yeah, x number of modes. All right. OK, great. Any more questions? <laughs> I, can, I can ask a lot more questions, but I, yeah. I want to be respectful of your time. No, no, for sure. Let's have a final two minutes. We are 6.58 here. So, yeah. OK, then. I'll, I'll give you a little pitch of mine. <laughs> so, sure. Uh, so what I do right now is uh, working in real estate. We buy and sell homes. Um, I'm actually working with my brother to do the same thing um, on the side. But, I, you know, I, I let him take care of that. 
I wanted to focus on e-commerce. I've always been uh, enamored by the uh, the the life of an e-commerce entrepreneur, and obviously, the, you know, it's all the wrong wrong ideas of it. But uh, I've grown up from that a little bit now. But I still have that interest in e-commerce. And one of the things I want to do is um, in the in the field I work in right now, I see a lot of people making. Uh, for lack of better terms, stupid purchases. I, I see a lot of people making stupid purchases. I want to uh, have a, a, a website where people can go make that stupid purchase, but it's something that'll increase in value. So if you want to buy a Rolex, right? Um, and, and two ways around that, right? I want to buy a stupid watch that I don't, I don't need, right? But I can go buy that, uh, pay you know, monthly on it. And once I've finished paying it off, I get it. And guess what? You know, I'm not, historically it hasn't lost value and I'm not going to lose value on it in the future. Right. And it was the stupidest purchase ever. So something like a, a website where people are kind of protected from, uh, you know, this is a stupid purchase, but I'm not going to, it's not actually stupid. I'm not going to lose money on this. Mm. Uh, something to provide value in, in that way where people can still enjoy, you know, making purchases that, that you know are showing off and all kinds of stuff, but it, it protects them from from losing on it. Yeah, sure. So it looks like a very niche market, and uh, basically, um, uh, so obviously, you know, I would always uh, suggest to have a like a so under so just calculate the total. Uh, I would say market size for this one. What is the market size? How many millions or billions of dollars uh, basically annually? and then go from there. Uh, but if you think that, you know, I want to, even if it is a, a smaller size, I want to do it because I really want to try it, then yes, build it basically. And build and uh, probably, you know, uh, look for customer who can acquire or who'd want to add to their bigger portfolio of their e-commerce solutions. So you can do that. So the, these are the multiple so ways when uh, one of the ideas is not very big enough, like the big fish will actually buy it and you will get a profit out of it. You will also get a satisfaction that I, I thought about this meaningful or this valuable startup. I did work on my execution and somebody really liked it. My part is done. So I think this is one of that uh, problem that you can solve, certainly. But I would say, you know, try to find out total uh, market size and then uh, uh, go from there. And... Uh, do the beta testing first. Don't build on the product yet. You know, uh, I would always suggest that you know build Google Forms, send it out to your friends, families uh, at U USC Alumni Network, and see if people would want to use it, how they would want to use it, and based on that data, decide what you want to really build, and m become uh, m make an MVP like you know the minimum viable product type, and see uh, how it uh, works out, how many downloads or how many activity. Uh, you know, uh, that you get and then go full-fledged basically. Before that, don't do that. You got it. Thank you so much. Great. So, thank you so much uh, everybody for joining in. Uh, thank you for listening uh, for this uh, uh, series, dream series. So, thank you so much, Professor, for uh, inviting me. Thank you all.